David here with Fig Boot on Pens, back again with another fountain pen review. The pen I have to show you today is one which celebrates the 50 year anniversary of one of mankind's crowning achievements, the Apollo 11 mission to the moon. And the pen is called the Montegrappa Moon Landing. Uh, what I'm going to do today is go over the parts and features of the Montegrappa moon landing, talk about what I care for and what I don't care for. I'll show some measurements, size comparisons, and provide a writing sample. Thanks go out to Kenro Industries, the U.S. distributor for Montegrappa, for providing this pen on loan for review. Uh, to commemorate the anniversary of this historic mission, uh, Montegrappa has actually released two pens. There is the limited edition model, which has a large number of bells and whistles and retails for around $7,000 for the silver version and about $45,000 for the gold version. Uh, the pen we're going to take a look at today is the open edition. I'll discuss the price of this pen a little bit later on, but it is considerably less and uh, very much more obtainable for the vast majority of us. Uh, the pen arrives in this zippered container, uh, which is actually a replica of a lunar sample return container. Uh, this is the container that the astronauts placed all of the moon rocks in for their lunar missions. Now, something that I learned, the thing is you can't just pick up a rock from the surface of the moon and throw it in the moon lander and then bring it back to Earth. Uh, the reason being is that the in the moon lander there'll be oxygen, and if those r r rocks come in contact with oxygen, then it can potentially change their chemical structure. Uh, and it was important to store the rock samples safely and securely, which is where these containers came into play. Uh, they would put the rocks in plastic bags and vacuum seal them while they were outside, uh, and then place them in these containers, which were also airtight. And then when they came back down to Earth, uh, then they were able to study these rocks in a controlled environment using dry nitrogen. Uh, on the top of this box, uh, there is the mission patch for Apollo 11. The patch was designed by a member of the crew, Michael Collins. Uh, he wanted a symbol for a peaceful lunar landing by the United States, so he chose the national bird of the United States, the eagle, and they put an olive branch in its claws to represent their peaceful mission. It's funny because this patch actually has an error on it. Uh, while on the mission, when they were looking back at Earth, the shadow wasn't vertical like it is in the patch here. It's actually horizontal with the lower half in darkness. The zipper pull here on the side of this container is slightly curved, uh, which is just kind of a cool look, which I like. Uh, but I will say the zipper itself isn't that smooth, and it does take a little bit of effort to operate. Uh, inside, we have the pen, and we'll take that out, and there is a picture of the curved surface of the Earth as it is seen from outer space. Um, underneath the pen, we do have a couple of things. There is a couple of uh, standard international black cartridges. There is a nice polishing cloth. Uh, and then there is a use and care guide that has a cover of Apollo 11 and the surface of the moon, uh, but inside is just a standard uh, Montegrampa use and care guide in 10 different languages. And here we have the pen. This is the Montegrappa Moon Landing. Uh, the pen is made from aluminum and has a really nice matte finish. Uh, the trim is palladium plated. Uh, the limited edition is very realistic in regard to the look and design of the rocket. Uh, it's the actual colors of the rocket, which were black and white. Uh, this open edition provides more of a kind of a more representative look and is more of a silver and black. Coming in at 56 grams, this is a rather hefty pen, uh, but I don't mind uh, a bit of weight to my pens, and I don't find the weight of this model to be unwieldy. Uh, on July 16, 1969, astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins launched from the Kennedy Space Center in Florida in the tallest and most powerful rocket ever built by man. And four days later, on July 20th, Armstrong and Aldrin landed the Apollo Lunar Module on the moon's surface. Uh, the lunar module was actually named Eagle, hence the iconic phrase, the Eagle has landed. Uh, let's start by taking a look at the cap. Uh, the top of the cap is flat, 
and then it flares out and it kind of stair steps its way up the cap. It's straight and then angles up and then it's straight and then angles up and then it's straight for the last inch or so. Um, I like the clip. It's in the form of the stairway structure that supports the rocket as it's on the launch pad. Um, I will say that it is a bit on the tight side. Um, it's functional, but does require a little bit of effort to use. Uh, on the bottom part of the cap, uh, it says Montegrappa, and on either side of that, it says United States. Uh, there is an even transition from the cap to the barrel, and the rocket imagery continues on the barrel, which is straight. Uh, the details on the cap and barrel are laser etched and look really nice. It's really well done. Uh, there's some very nice detail, uh, down to the flag actually having 50 distinguishable stars. Uh, at the base of the barrel, it says USA. Then there is a steep step down to some threads, which are used to post the cap. And then at the end of the barrel, uh, it is a palladium plated piece, which is flat. Now, Typically, I really do not care for twist to post designs. If I just unscrewed the cap of the pen, I really don't want to have to take twice as long then to screw the cap back on the back of the barrel. So uh, in that case, uh, you know, this pen would never get posted and the posting threads would just always be exposed. And typically they aren't very attractive. Um, that being said, uh, I feel the twist to post works on this particular pen. Um, if you choose to post the cap, it actually operates smoothly and while posted, uh, the pen actually does look very sharp. But if you choose to not post the cap, I feel that this portion of the barrel still looks really nice and the metal threads really don't bother me and they actually kind of add to the overall look of the pen. Um, once you do remove the cap, underneath is a number six steel nib, which is available in extra fine, fine, medium, broad, and both 1.1 and 1.5 millimeter stubs. Uh, on it is the Montegrappa filigree etching. Uh, Montegrappa nibs are manufactured by Yovo, uh, and I find, that, find their steel nibs to perform very well. Uh, and as you'll see in the writing sample, this nib is no exception. And then here's a look at the plastic feed. Uh, at the end of the section, there is a palladium plated band, uh, and then the section angles up just slightly. Uh, while the section is aluminum like the rest of the pen, it does have a matte finish that really helps you maintain a solid grip. Uh, the section transitions into the metal cap threads, which are rather wide and blocky and not sharp at all. Uh, then there is a rather large step up to the barrel. Uh, that I do find this transition to be a bit steep, so I do prefer to grip my pen a little closer to the end of the section to have to avoid my fingers resting on that steep step. Um, I do find this pen to be plenty long enough to use unposted. But as I mentioned earlier, if you should choose to post this cap, I think it looks pretty sharp and I don't think it back weights the pen or throws off the balance at all. Uh, this is a cartridge converter pen. This pen will accept standard international cartridges, two of which are provided, and a Montegrappa branded converter is included. The Montegrappa Moon Landing Open Edition retails for just under $400. Uh, and I feel that that is actually a very reasonable price for what you receive with this pen. Um, it is uh, unique and it is interesting. Uh, and I really like the design and I feel that it uh, looks cool and is functional. Um, if you're someone who's really into NASA or space travel or astrophysics, uh, then I would think that this pen is pretty much a must buy for you. Um, I feel that Montegrappa did a lot right with this pen which is nice to see. Thanks again, go out to Kenro Industries for the loan of this pen. Uh, now it is time for some measurements, size comparisons, and a writing sample. Here we go with some size comparisons for the Montegrappa Moon Landing. Uh, here it is with a Sailor King of Pen Tangerine. Then here it is with a Pelican M1000. Uh, and then here it is with a Pilot 823. And in regard to some other pens, here it is with a Lamy 2000 stainless steel. Uh, here it is with a Lamy All Star. Uh, and then finally, here it is with a Pilot Metro. Here we go with the writing sample for the Montegrappa moon landing.
This is a medium steel nib, uh, and the ink that I'm using today is Colorverse Ham number 65. I thought it would be appropriate to use a space-themed ink. Uh, this is what the ink looks like. Um, that uh, it, It's not especially a saturated blue, uh, something somewhat similar to something like the Carolina Blue from Robert Oster, uh, or even something like the Noodler's Tolstoy. It's, not, it's a little bit darker than that, but uh, they're not necessarily overly saturated inks. Uh, this is what the bottle looks like. Uh, this is actually uh, named for the uh, the very first humanoid la launched into space in 1961, which was a chimpanzee by the name of Ham, uh, who was launched by as part of the American Space Program. So let's take a look at the rest of the writing sample. I don't know why I wrote that O and G so high there. Uh, but this steel nib uh, by Yovo is very nice. Um, it is a bit on the stiff side. It doesn't have a ton of flex to it, uh, but it is very smooth. Uh, and the ink flow is very nice out of this nib. This ink is a little bit on the dry side, but that is, that's why that is, but the ink flow out of the pen is very nice. Uh, in regard to some reverse writing, It is a little bit on the scratchy side, uh, but not too bad. And then in regard to some fast writing, you can see there's no problem in it keeping up whatsoever. So there we have the Montegrappa Moon Landing. Uh, I think it's a very interesting pen, and as I said uh, during the review portion, that I, I think it's just done very well uh, in regard to the symbolism and what the pen means uh, and how it was executed. So until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.